wa masuala ya usalama na vile vile amewahudumu katika jeshi Brigadia Mohamed hebu tusikilize tathmini yake kuhusiana na kifo cha Ogola na vile vile uteuzi wa mkuu wa majeshi ambaye atakayeteuliwa ni vipi ama ni shughuli ita, shughuli hiyo itafuatwa vipi katika kuhakikisha tunapata CDF ambaye ni mpya katika taifa hili tena uh, my name is uh, Brigadier General Tayad Ahmed Mohamed and I'm currently a senior advisor at Defense and Security at the Hall Institute for International Studies in uh, Nairobi. I would like to start first by sending my condolences to the family of General Gola and all those who lost their lives during the last um, air crash. It was a sad day for KDF and indeed a sad day for the families and the entire nation. And we pray the good Lord give them the comfort and strength to bear this loss. What is going on now is first I want to reiterate what the president said and appreciate that as commander-in-chief and president of this country, we go got three, day, three days of mourning for General Gola and those we lost in that uh, air crash. That is very well appreciated indeed by members of the Kenya Defense Forces and also the comrades in this, uh, in this uh, uh, country. We're also happy that uh, all honors have been granted to all those who lost their lives. First, I want to make it very clear that the issue of succession in the Kenya Defense Forces and indeed, in the empires of the world, is something that is very clear. First and foremost, I want to make it very clear that on the passing of a commander, there's never a vacuum at that moment. Immediately, the deputy, the vice, or the person second in charge will fill that position while waiting formally for the position to be filled as appropriate. We know, in the case of our country, that uh, that action of course, I should mention first of all that we are in the mourning period and therefore the succession is not important right now. It is much more of the honors that we want to give to our departed friends and then after that we will come back to the issue of succession. We know very well that that rests with the Defense Council and ultimately the Commander-in-Chief and President of this country who will therefore on advice the Defense Council be able to make his decision and that decision, I should mention very strongly, very strongly, rests with the Commander-in-Chief. He has liberty to pick anybody he feels suits that position. He's not tied down to anybody or any uh, issues across. It's purely a function that rests with him and his office. Let me mention that in terms of uh, um, seniority and who may fill that position, we have currently three sitting lieutenant generals who may, may qualify for this position. But I want to say again very clearly that that decision rests with the president and commander-in-chief. He may even go out of that and appoint somebody else. But as you have asked, indeed, as it is now, we have three candidates, strong candidates, who may take the position. But again, very much at the pleasure and discretion of the commander-in-chief. Now, I mentioned earlier that across the chain of command in the armed forces, there's always a deputy at every level of command. And immediately, the uh, incumbent departs office the deputy will take over for a temporary period while waiting the appointment of the final office bearer. In our case, as I said earlier, we are in the morning period, which will, uh, of course, extend. Tomorrow is the final burial, and then we have next week on Friday the church service in honor of the general uh, particularly. And after that, there's no, it's not cast in stone that this is the procedure that will follow. This is the timing that will follow. Again, it rests purely at the pleasure of the president in terms of the time and in terms of the person. In a temporary capacity, you do it to the full requirement of that office. I've said very clearly, this concept does not come from peacetime. It comes from the war front, where in oppressions, in war, so the commander loses life, the deputy, the vice, the one immediately below, has all the full powers to observe the requirements of the office. And therefore, as it stands now, the Vice Chief of Defense Staff, being acting capacity, has full capacity and full obligation to take the office as required of him until, until that post is filled formally. Maybe do you think was there a breach in contract, in, in protocol, sorry, by not securing uh, the CDF when it toured an operation area? General Gola was a very humble officer and with a very high degree of humility. 
you know, goal was very simple. A very simple, in fact, he was in segregate between officers and men. He was down to the earth. And he was ready to do anything that is required of that office. Therefore, choosing himself to go out to take that function on that day showed his humility, showed his humbleness and his spirit to achieve what is required of him in terms of fulfilling the requirements of the office. One would have said, why him? Well, he felt he had an obligation to do it. And I will fully support that action, that you have a freedom to run the office as you wish, and indeed to take all that you require. And part of it is being humble and going all the way down to do what is required of you or your subordinates. So he mtazamaji huyo ni brigadia Ahmed Mohamed ambaye ni mshauri wa Masala Usalama na anafanya kazi na shirika la UN Mwige